In a special room at his home in Wilmot, Illinois, Mr. Kraft exhibited all of his collection of rocks and gemstones. It gave him much joy to guide school children and church groups around the displays. But he always saved one corner of the room for last. It looked unimpressive at first, a corner with a pile of ordinary colorless stones. But these were his fluorescent stones. or trick to what you see. To explain, let's compare your eyes to a radio receiver. You know that a radio's reception of sound is limited to a certain frequency. You hear only sounds carried on the frequency that your radio is built to receive. Your eyes receive light somewhat as a radio receives sound. In ordinary light, what your eye accepts is limited to a certain band of light waves. This is the visible spectrum. Above this is the ultraviolet spectrum, and below it, the infrared spectrum. We aren't able to see ultraviolet or infrared colors because ordinary light outshines other lights. But now we've tuned out the ordinary light and turned on the ultraviolet lights. So you are seeing color that has always been in these stones, but which is invisible under ordinary light. This color is due to certain of the stone's mineral content, which responds to the ultraviolet light. The red stones on the top of each table come from near Franklin, New Jersey. It's interesting to note that mineral content also indicates the geographical area from which the stones are selected. And a real rock connoisseur could probably tell you from where many of the other stones have come. In the background are two plaques. The parrot might be called a crushed stone painting. Fluorescent stone was almost powdered and then cemented to the board in a manner of a painting. Mr. Kraft had the V for Victory plaque created during the last war, and acknowledging that victory could be complete only with recognition of the message of the cross. The symbolic cross was added to the picture. The larger cross in the background is made again with crushed fluorescent stones. The red stones in the center of the cross were purposely retained in larger form so that their prominence would remind us of the sacrifice Christ made for us. Mr. Kraft carried this cross with him from church to church upon invitation to give his sermon in stones. At the close of each service, he would turn the ultraviolet light upon this cross, and in the darkened church, the congregation would join in singing familiar hymns of the cross. Mr. Kraft compared the character of stones to that of people, for there are many parallels. Hear now the voice of Mr. Kraft speaking of Peter's writings in the New Testament. 1 Peter, chapter 2. Peter refers to four kinds of stones. First, he speaks of the Lord as the precious living stone. Next, he refers to members of the Christian congregation as lively stones. Third, he refers to the chief cornerstone of his church as the stone which the builders rejected, but which later became the head of the corner. And last of all, he speaks of the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense. Comparing these worthless rocks to people who are disobedient to the word of God, this significant and beautiful figure of speech relating to stones, it seems to me, could only have been conceived by a man who really knew stones. 
who understood how to find the beauty and mystery locked up inside them. So it is my contention that Peter was the first rock hound of recorded history. How else could he have known the fine distinction between living stones, lively stones, and stumbling stones? The study of Peter's character reveals that he was not like a great unmovable rock at all, but quite the contrary. Peter was impulsive, warm-hearted, and more or less impetuous in his disposition. It seems to me that it is quite possible Jesus may have observed this rockhound Simon studying stones one day, carrying them about perhaps in his pockets and fingering them as rockhounds do. On one such occasion, the master may have said to him in his sublime love and understanding, Simon, you're just a rolling stone. From here on, I'm going to call you Peter. But upon your deep inward devotion, upon your faith in me and your love, I will build my church. As you walked into this room, under the white light, these stones looked like ordinary gray stones. They looked like stones that might have been piled in the fence corner. Then the ultraviolet light was turned on and their hidden beauty was revealed. Often the real beauty and character of a person is hidden until it is brought under the influence of the light of Christ, his life and teaching. When the ordinary person steps into the way lighted by Jesus Christ, he becomes a new creature, and it is his responsibility then to bring others to this light. Then too, when that person is gone. His warmth and glow remain for some time afterwards.